out a pen and start answering questions and getting the pen flowing and getting your writing flowing. That's the idea behind these five W and one H questions. Where do they need the information? Where will they use it? The context. How should I achieve my purpose with this subject? How big is my subject and project? And how do I narrow this big subject down into what my focus is in the subject? So here we are continuing with the general principles of writing. Your document's purpose is probably the most important element of the four elements. It keeps you structured. It keeps you focused. It's what you want to research and achieve. So you're not doing research on things that you cannot report on. You don't have time to waste with the FYP. You're taking a lot of other courses. Uh, if you get sidetracked, if you go off on a tangent, you're not going to be on time with the FYP. So uh, this purpose and being very clearly focused on what your purpose is, is going to help you to do the research that you need to do and not to waste time thinking, writing, doing research on things that you're not going to report on. Right at the very beginning, I want you to write a temporary draft of a purpose statement, a statement of purpose. You can change the statement of purpose, but I want us to be talking in the smaller groups, 20 people, about what your statements of purpose are. You're going to be rewriting them and rethinking them and rewriting them as you're doing research and as you're talking to your advisors, but I want you to be thinking about what your purpose is right from the beginning. It will help you focus your research and help you focus your, your writing later on. Okay. The statement of purpose should only be one or two sentences, often called a thesis statement, as in hypothesis. You've all done work with hypothesis in science classes. I'm sure you know what hypothesis is. This statement guides your research and drafting and keeps your writing on the su subject of the topic. In your final draft, no other information, only things that are related to your thesis. Your the thesis narrows down uh, what your topic is, what your writing is, what your focus is. Any other extra information should be cut Statement of purpose acts like a compass for your document. It guides you, and your developing ideas stay on the one same topic or subject, and the parts are then related to the whole. I need to tell you that uh, I'm going to take uh, your uh, initial PowerPoint, and this PowerPoint is already at uh, Google Docs, Google Drive. You could look at it, the same thing I'm showing you right now at Google Drive. I'll show you how to get it in a few minutes. Um, so all of this information that I'm giving you this week and next week is, uh, this week is already available on Google Drive. You could look at it on, on your phone. And I'll send everybody an email with the URL uh, where this is on Google Drive. And also the timeline that Lombro sent you, I'll put that up there too. You have to use an action verb. Oh, that's really loud. Um, for the purpose statement, a good statement of purpose ha is the verb, should be an action verb. Uh, it will help in making the statement of purpose effective f for you and for the reader. You can build your statement of purpose around the action verb. Here are some examples of statements of purpose action verbs. For information, you have to inform these. I'm not going to read that to you. And then for persuasion, and you are doing persuasion to some degree. The FYP, what kind of writing is it? Uh, it's not like a letter to your mother. It's not like other kinds of writing. It has components of information, uh, exposition, explanation, some description. But basically, I think these kinds of verbs, to, uh, these kinds of verbs for information and these kinds of verbs for persuasion, these are the kinds of verbs that you're going to be using in the FYP. So these are the kinds of writing that you're doing in the FYP. 
I like this picture of this little guy. He's typing, very frustrated, see him crumpling up the papers there. Uh, I am using a lot of things from Purdue University's online writing labs. I think probably the Language Center uses a lot of the material too. It's, it's good. And I have a link here. If you click on that, you can go directly to Purdue University's stuff. The FYP report is a detailed discussion of your work for readers who want to know in some depth and completeness the background of what was done, subject, how it was done, this is your method section, what the results were, the results section, conclusions, and recommendation section. So these are four sections that are required in the template that the Civil Engineering Department uh, gives you. Decide on the general subject of your FYP research, then manage the information you collect, sorting through text, scraps, and research data to uncover what you need. Your writing should give your primary readers for the FYP, your advisor and second reader. Uh, I get it before they get it, but uh, they, they're the primary readers, the primary markers. Only the information that they require. Don't write about other things. Many students, when they're talking about uh, what their statement of purpose is, at the beginning they say, I'm going to do some research on this, and then I'm going to do some of this, and also I want to do a little of this. And, and it sounds to me that they're not clearly focused. And it's not surprising when you're beginning out, you're searching for what your, your purpose is at the beginning. But eventually, you have to have one clear thing to hang things on, one clear purpose to hang things and relate things to. So you can do that with language or you can do that with your research and uh, your advisors will help you to do that. If you're wasting time doing research on other things that you think are interesting that you might be curious about, you're not gonna have time to finish all this FYP stuff. Organizing and drafting. You have to do two processes at the same time. And this is why we had Homer Simpson, can you do two things at one? This is multitasking. Organizing the content, shaping your ideas into a document that will be clear to the readers, and drafting the content, generating the content of your document by including facts, data, reasoning, and examples. So you're gonna, do, you're gonna be doing writing and also organizing, thinking about things at the same time, going back and forth between the two. Uh, Homer thinks that that's very difficult. At the end of the slideshow, if we have time, I'll play Homer Simpson screaming again. Not right, no, no. Organizing and drafting, even during the research, you can easily know how to organize and connect the information you collect in a way that achieves your writing purpose. If you follow and mostly stay with the requirements of the kind of writing, such as explanation and description, you're doing explanation and description, you're probably doing process analysis with your methods and in your conclusions and recommendations, you're doing some argument or persuasion. Maybe argument to some people means going back and forth. Lao Gao. No, that's, that's not the idea of argument when we're talking about professional writing. When we're talking about research writing, argument means persuading your audience to what you learned, what you discovered in your research. That's what we mean by argument. For example, the text on the next page is recognizable as a set of instructions because it follows requirements of language and layout in the page of that kind of writing. I'm not saying that your FYP is a set of instructions. What I'm saying is this is clearly recognizable as this kind of writing. How to brush your teeth. Does anyone not know how to brush teeth? Okay. Everybody knows. You can raise your hand, you know. You can see. This is a set of instructions because it looks like a set of instructions. The FYP writing has to look like an FYP, final year project report, because it follows what is required in a, that kind of writing. You have a title, which introduces the subject of discussion to the audience, so it should state the subject. And the, one of the purposes of the title is to generate the reader's interest in the report. For me, anyway, I think your advisor is going to be writing, uh, interested in it because he's already in the, into the subject area. But if you can persuade me that this is interesting to me with your title, I thank you. Uh, the abstract is a summary of the purpose, the thesis statement, methods and results. Just a summary. 
the essential points. For example, a good abstract must answer what are the main essential ideas, who's the research intended for, the readers, and what is the significance for the industry or field of research. A poor abstract example, this is an actual, real abstract draft last year. We changed it eventually, but it started like this from 2012-13. Construction delays are a common civil engineering projects, are common in civil engineering projects in Hong Kong, inevitably resulting in contractual claims and increased project cost. This study was aimed first at gathering the perceptions of civil construction practitioners on how significant are the causes of delay. And second, investigating whether the suggestions as stated in the report of the Construction Industry Review Committee which comprises members with good standing and knowledge in the construction and related fields, as well as those from other professions who are responsible for the examining of the current state of the construction industry in terms of its output quantity, the quality of work, its environmental friendliness, state site safety, its workforce and the system of supervision <laughs> are applicable to and effective at mitigating the corresponding delays with reference to a ranking order to establish using the mean score method. <sighs> Take a breath. The extent of the differences in the perception among the different respondent groups on these two issues was also examined. Whew. This is how I feel after that. So we worked on it. And we selected out the essential ideas from that abstract draft. And they're in the gold, gathering the perception. It's still a lot of words, but we ended up with this. This study first gathered perceptions of civil, civil construction practitioners on significance of causes of delay. It's quite formal still, but I think it gets at the essentials of what he was trying to talk about eventually in the FYP. Better? It's shorter anyway. Um, these guys are <laughs> That's really loud. <laughs> okay, the idea in the FYP abstract is not to overfill the brain. Don't put too much in at one time. Your reader can't hold that much at one time. So the introduction acquaints the reader with the subject and purpose of the paper. Generates the reader's interest in the topic. Offers background information, usually background information. You might do a separate literature review section where you're doing very uh, deliberate and clear um, background information uh, that the reader needs to know and understand the report and its importance called the Literature Review. I hope that you do when you turned in the progress report in the end of December, uh, either a, a good reference list which has notes you annotate